Quicksort is one of those DSL Gorthams that people actually use in their day to day work and not just for the interviews. Not only because it's so fast, but it also saves a lot of memory while doing so with its amazing time and space complexity. So let's go on and understand it visually and then we will discuss its implementation in JavaScript along with its most asked interview question. So here as you can see, I've written this quicksort algorithm over here and I've taken this array. So let's understand how we can use this algorithm to sort this array. So in quicksort, the first step is to take a pivot from this given array over here. So a lot of people take this pivot over here or probably in the somewhere in the middle or maybe at the very last. But I like to take the very first element as our pivot. So I'm gonna write it just like that. Okay, so now what? Now what we are supposed to do? So now if you see in this algorithm over here, we have taken two arrays, a left and a right array. We put the elements smaller than our pivot in our left array and the elements bigger than our pivot go into the right array over here. So if we write our pivot over here, just like that, let's go through all of these elements one by one. So two over here is obviously smaller than our pivot. So it's gonna go inside of our left array. So I'm gonna write it inside of our left array over here. And nine is obviously bigger than our pivot. So it's gonna go inside of our right array, just like that. Then three, it's smaller, it's gonna go over here. Six, it's bigger, it's gonna go over here. One, eight, and then there's seven. So we got these two arrays, left and right. So now if you see at the very end, we are returning this array with our left array, a pivot in the between and our right array. But if you notice for both of these left and right array, we are calling this function again recursively so that we can sort this array independently. So now if you see, let's go inside of our left array first. So inside of this, we're going to repeat the same process again. So I'm going to assume a pivot at array of zero. And then we're gonna have a left array and a right array. So as we're gonna traverse, first of all, we have three over here. It's gonna go inside of our right array because it's bigger than two. So, okay, then there's one. So one will go to the left array. Now, same thing for the right one as well. So we're gonna assume nine as our pivot. So I've taken nine and first six, okay. Then eights and all of these are essentially smaller than our pivot, right? So I'm gonna write them inside of our left array and there's no right array over here. So, okay, that's fine. Now again, we're gonna do the same thing for a left and right array over here as well. But notice, as we do this, we're gonna encounter this edge case over here, that array dot length is less than or equal to one. If it's less than or equal to one, we're just gonna return our complete array. So, yep, it is less than or equal to one. So it's just gonna simply return our array and we're gonna get one. And for three as well, same, three. So this array up until this point has been sorted. Now, same thing for this one. We're gonna assume six as our pivot and around six, we're gonna see. So, okay, eight is bigger than that. So I'm gonna put eight in the right array, left array is empty. And seven is also bigger than that. So I'm gonna put seven over here. Same thing for this one as well. So eight is gonna be the pivot. Seven is smaller than that. So I'm gonna put seven and this has been sorted over here. And this will be returned to the, this place. Instead of this, I'm going to write six, seven, and eight over here. Great. Now again, this is going to be returned to this place. So we can write six, seven, and eight. And this array has been sorted now. Now again, this is going to be returned. So this part has been completely sorted now. Let's check for the left part. We can see that this has been sorted as well. So this is going to be returned now. So now finally, I'm going to remove these brackets and our array has been sorted. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is our sorted array right over here. So this is how the quicksort algorithm works. Now let's go on and see the implementation of quicksort in JavaScript. Also, before moving forward, I would like to mention my DSA sheet, which I announced in my last video of search algorithms. And I've received so many messages from you all telling me how many times you've encountered these questions in your DSA interviews. Therefore, I would highly recommend you all to download this DSA sheet from the link in the description down below so that you can avoid hundreds of useless questions on lead code and do only the ones that actually matter so that you can prepare for your DSA interviews efficiently. Okay, so let's see how we can implement quick sort in JavaScript. So we're supposed to write a function to sort the given array nums in the ascending order. All right, let's see. So obviously inside this function, we've taken an array as an input. And first of all, 
I'm gonna take a pivot that is gonna help us out for sorting this array. So I'm gonna take a variable called pivot and I'm gonna assign array of zeroth element. And after that, I'm gonna take two variables. First is left, which is going to be an empty array for storing our left array. And other one is going to be right for storing our right array. But as you remember, as I always say, we have to handle the edge cases as well. So one major edge case in this will be if the array dot length is less than or equal to one, then we're supposed to simply return that array. Now, we already have our pivot over here, then we can loop through our array now. So I'm gonna take i equals one since we already have the pivot as array of zeros. So we're gonna start from the first index. So, okay, so i equals one and we're gonna go to array dot length and i plus plus. All right, now inside of it, I'm gonna check if the current element that is array of i is less than the pivot. Then we're gonna simply push it inside of our left array. Left dot push array of i. Else, I'm gonna push it inside of our right array. So right dot push array of i, simple. Now after all of this has been done, I'm gonna simply return our array with our left array. That is this array over here. So I'm gonna call this function recursively. So quick sort of left. Now you might be thinking, why have I spread it over here? So if you think about it, let's suppose a scenario where the array of length is less than one. That is, it looks something like this. Let's say an array with two over here. So this will be returned here if i didn't write this spread operator over here it will be taken as an element with these array brackets as well so to remove these array brackets we need this spread operator after this spread operator has done its thing it's going to look something like this too and obviously the rest of the array after this right so that is why we're using the spread operator over here then we're going to write our pivot because obviously pivot is going to be in the middle since the smaller elements are on the left and the bigger element are on the right and then we're gonna write the rightmost element by calling them recursively over here. And that's it, that is all we need to do. So I'm gonna take our array, do some console log of quick sort, and inside of it, I'm gonna provide our array over here, just like that. Let's try to run this, node quick sort. And yep, you see, our array has been successfully sorted, awesome. Now let's understand what's the time and space complexity for this algorithm. So if we go back to our whiteboard, you can see every time we are dividing our array into two pieces over here and we are doing it for n number of times. So if you see, we have a loop over here, right? Which goes to array dot length, which we're going to consider n in this case. So we are doing this for n number of times and we are dividing this array into two separate parts. So that's why this is going to have a logarithmic time complexity. So if we write over here, time complexity for our average case this will be o of log n but since we are doing this for n number of times this is going to be n log n but what's about the worst case so in this part if you noticed this was uh, 2 3 1 right but in this case we had 2 already which was smaller than 3 so this was not the worst case the worst case would have been if the first element every time would be the largest element of this array. So in that case, we would have to do n number of iterations with these recursive calls as well, with this recursive call and this recursive call. So in that case, the worst case time complexity would be n square. And our best case time complexity as well is n log n. But what about the space complexity? You're gonna think, okay, we're not creating a new array inside of it, right? So this shouldn't have any space complexity, it should be O of one. But no, that's not the case. Since we are using recursion in this algorithm, so quicksort does use a small amount of auxiliary space for its recursive function calls. So the maximum depth of our call stack depends on the recursive calls made, number of recursive calls made. So that's why our average case space complexity, space, complexity will be O of log n. But what about the worst case? So in the worst case, this could be like the largest element will be on the first place every single time. So this will be O of n. That is we're doing these recursive calls for n number of times. And on an average, this algorithm uses 
space complexity of o, lo, o of log n and the time complexity of o of n log n which is very good considering real world scenarios and that is why this algorithm is used for large data sets now let's go on and see the type of interview question that is generally asked in our data structure interviews on quick sort so i open my dsa book over here and if we scroll down to sorting algorithms you're gonna see we have quick sort algorithm over here and i'm gonna open this link all right, so the question says that we've been given an array of integer nums and we're supposed to sort it in an ascending order and return it. And you must solve this problem in O of n log n time complexity and without using any inbuilt functions. So for this question, I'm going to actually tweak our algorithm a little bit and I'm going to show you another way of doing a quick sort algorithm. So simply, first of all, I'm going to call uh, another function. I'm going to create another function over here, function quick sort, which is going to take an array as an input. And it's going to take a couple of more things, which I'm going to tell you in just a moment. And simply over here, I'm going to return quick sort with the array that was provided to us. Now, inside of this quick sort function, first of all, I'm going to choose our pivot. So I'm going to write const pivot index. I'm going to decide the pivot index. And this will be decided inside of another function, which will be called as pivot. And I'm going to provide it our array along with the start and the end index of our array. So I'm going to by default take left equals zero or you can call it start or end doesn't really matter. So left equals zero and right equals array dot length minus one. All right. So this is what I'm going to provide to this function and I'm going to show you just as a, in just a minute what this function is all about. So yeah, this is what we're going to do. And also we're going to add a check over here if left is less than right only then do perform these option, uh, operations. Okay, so now we know what our pivot index is. Now I'm going to call this function again, quick sort right over here. And I'm going to provide it our current array along with our left index and our pivot index. So over here, what we're essentially doing is we're doing this part over here. That is our left array. We are sorting our left array. So that is why the start index will be left and the end index will be pivot index minus one. Same, you might have guessed it right for the right index. It's going to be pivot index plus one and I'm going to provide the end that is the right index. Okay, after all of this has been done, our array would be sorted. So I'm going to return our array. Now, if you remember in our algorithm that I showed you earlier, we were taking these two left and right arrays as well which kind of do take a little bit of space in the memory. But now we're going to get rid of them and we're going to do it completely in place that we're going to completely modify this array right over here. So, okay, then we're going to return it. But what about this pivot function? So I'm going to write a function pivot and it's going to take three things. First, the actual array that is the left or the right array, whatever it is, then our left and right current left and right indexes. That is our start or end index. Let's just call it start and end. So I'm going to call it start equals zero by default and end will be equals to array dot length minus one by default. If you want, you can call these as well left and right. Let's just call them left and right over here as well. I think that's better for our understanding. Now inside of this function, we're going to do the same thing that we were doing over here that for each and every function, we were deciding a pivot. So by default, we were taking it as zeroth index, right? But in this case, since we are not using the left and right function, what we will simply do is we will simply shift our elements. If let's say if uh, this is our array, right? So if this was our pivot, so and let's say two was smaller than five. So simply we will shift two from here to there instead of taking a left and right. So I'm going to say let pivot. And I'm going to take by default our first index as a pivot. So array of zero. And then after that, I'm going to say swap index. I'm going to take a swap index as a start. And after this, I'm going to run a for loop just like we were doing earlier. So for let i equals start plus one because start is our pivot index and we have to iterate after that. So start plus one, i less than array dot length and i plus plus. Now inside of this, as I mentioned, we are supposed to shift our arrays elements now, not just 
push them inside of some left or right array. So I'm going to say if array of i is less than pivot. If it's less than pivot, then simply we're going to swap them, right? So let's just create a swap function over here. So I'm going to say function swap. It's going to take three things, our array and both of the index that we are supposed to swap. I'm going to take a temporary variable. Inside of which I'm going to put our ith element. I'm going to put inside of array of i, array of j. And then finally, array of j will get back this temp. This is the standard swapping way, right? So now I'm going to take this swap function over here. And I'm going to call it swap of array, comma, swap index. So swap index, if you remember, was the index of our pivot right now. So we're supposed to swap our pivot with this uh, smaller element, right? So swap index, comma, i. I'm going to do swap idx plus plus. That means pivot has moved one step forward now. And after this whole thing has been done, I can simply call that function again inside this array, dart, comma, swap idx. So if we go through this uh, part one by one, so let's see, we're looping through this array and the swap index currently is on over here. So our loop will start from start plus one, that is this index over here. So I'm going to compare, is pivot more than array of i? Is five more than six? No, it's not. So we're going to move on. Again, we're going to check, is pivot more than array of i? Is five more than two? Yep, it is. So now we're going to say swap index plus plus. So this will be now moved to over here and our swap, our swap index and the current element. So this and this will be swapped. So two and six have now been swapped. Now moving forward for the third element over here. Is this more than pivot? No, it's not. So again, this will be swapped. So three will be swapped with six, just like that. And now our swapped index was moved plus plus before, before the swapping, it was moved. So now it is over here. Now for the last element, is pivot more than array of i? No, it's not more than array of i, so we're not going to do anything. So now at the very end, we're swapping the start with the swap index. So this was our start and we are swapping it with our swap index, which is right over here. So do you notice something? All of these smaller elements are now before the pivot and the larger elements or the bigger elements are after the pivot. And now in the end, simply we're going to return our swap index, which will signify our location of our pivot. So yep, simply this will return over here and we can continue our quick sort after this. Also one more thing, one mistake that I've made over here is this should be incremented before the swap is made over here. And also this won't be array of zero. This will be array of start, just like this. And now if we try to run this, there we go. It has been accepted and if we submit it, amazing. Our solution was successfully accepted. Awesome. And that's it. That is it for this video. Go and check out my DSA sheet if you haven't downloaded it yet. It's the best resource for DSA with JavaScript with all of these questions on all of these topics. You won't regret downloading this ebook, trust me, because it will save you a lot of time that you will spend on going through useless lead code questions.